All right, we are on about day five of these eggs, and I just wanted to show you if I can catch one again, but every so often they twirl around, the little eggs with the fish inside, possibly getting ready to hatch. So that's kind of exciting. At least I know there's life in there. And these are Pseudomagul uh, reticulatus. And uh, just getting these to hatch is only part of the battle. Getting them to thrive is a whole other part of the battle. So I just changed their water, and when you have baby rainbow fish, you want to change the water uh, at least daily, if not every couple of, you know, every 8 to 12 hours would be even more ideal. And if your eggs aren't hatching, uh, you can do a couple things. One of them is you can take a little vial or a cup with a lid, and you can put them in that put it at the bottom of you know like a 40 gallon bow front or a, some sort of tall tank 150 gallon uh, <clears throat> but a tall tank where you got some pressure on them and then you open up the cap on that for just a moment so that the, it, the, the eggs come to pressure and then seal it up so that the pressure is still in that vial and uh, that will allow the eggs to be under a little more pressure. See this fish is trying to eat them. <laughs> uh, so that the eggs are under a little more pressure. And sometimes that helps open them. Now, another thing that Gary Lang has said, which is incredibly helpful. Let's see here. This is the batch that was wriggling earlier that is incredibly helpful is that it was figured out that a lot of eggs weren't hatching and nobody could figure out why and it turns out that after a lot of trial and error it was prime or dechlorinator in the water that was causing the eggs not to hatch and now the way prime works is it's uh, hydrogen sulfides and um, I think there are what, sul uh, complex sulfide, sulfur oxide compounds in there too. And they will find ammonia or whatever compound, um, nitrates, nitrites. They will find different compounds in a certain uh, configuration and they fit with it correctly. And they basically surround it in a big blob, and then that blob renders those little shards of ammonia as not sharp anymore. I mean, that's not really what's happening, but if you think of it that way, think of them as little arrows floating around that do damage. And the, uh, the dechlorinator, there you go, you saw it move. Um, <clears throat> the dechlorinator kind of uh, grabs all of those little arrows and surrounds them into one big bouncy ball that can't hurt anybody so that is also causing the egg shells or membranes more correctly to toughen up and almost turn into like an egg shell rather than a squishy rubber ball membrane and uh, maybe even be causing you know osmosis or whatever other things go on between the inside and the outside of the egg to have some issues and so if you stop using water from from uh, that's been treated with prime all of a sudden the eggs are able to hatch they don't get stuck in there uh, in their membranes and we're good to go so keep these eggs in this little tray at around uh, 84 to 86 degrees, 82 to 86 degrees, keep them nice and warm, and we just let them hatch and uh, keep the fish away from them, and that's just uh, the basics of raising any sort of pseudomagal uh, eggs. Now, I don't have a ton here, I was working with 25 from the start, and fungi gets them sometimes, it looks like fungi is about to get one or more, 
saw one earlier. Here we go. This one is probably about to... It is probably gotten at this point by fungi. And for some reason it's stuck to that other egg really well. So those eggs are probably both a loss. But they, they turn white and, and uh, opalescent. Uh, or kind of like a white glowy foggy color. Like fog glass. And then the eggs are no longer viable and you have to remove them to stop it from spreading. Also, I've been taking this whole container out and wiping it down because a biofilm will start to form on any container, but I've been taking it out, scooting the eggs via just shaking it with water a little bit gently, scooting them all to one end, and then wiping it down with a paper towel or something slightly abrasive. And you can see that there's green algae or brown color stuff on that paper towel so you know that you are removing some sort of uh, layer and it looks like the first egg to hatch will probably be the one right right kind of center where there's two of them together on the left that's the egg that's moved the most so far and uh, the other thing we have to worry about is snails they are trying very very hard to get into here as well but hopefully that won't happen, and hopefully we can get them hatched, and we can get them into their little size, we can get them up here with their with other little baby fish buddies, and uh, since there's no parental care in the Pseudomagill rainbow fish family, uh, we'll just raise them up with fish that are small. You know, we probably will first actually, in all reality, throw them in here with the... Um, with the shrimp when they're very young for a week or two because even the baby shrimp are far too big for them they will be the size of a shrimp's leg think of that how small that'll be uh, they'll be very very teeny and they take a while to grow pseudomagills so they'll they'll grow eventually but at first they'll be pretty small so Alright guys, well, that's all I have for you today. Just thought I'd share this little egg moment with you. It's brought to you by the Egg and Dairy Council of America. And uh, support your local farms. No, I'm just kidding. I hope you guys enjoyed this a little bit, learned a little something. If you're trying to hatch rainbow fish eggs, or any eggs for that matter, the Dechlor turns out to be something that's toughening up a lot of eggs. So unless you have some... Uh, issue where your eggs are mushy when you're trying to breed your fish uh, I would suggest checking out the declor and seeing if that might be <clears throat> the issue and going from there here are the uh, the other pseudomagulls that are breeding right now and uh, they have a mop and I'll just pick off that mop for more eggs and on we go so and then we'll repeat the the egg process. So usually takes somewhere between two weeks and three weeks for these eggs to to hatch, I believe. Sometimes earlier, um, but they take longer than the big rainbow eggs, and they're quite large compared to the bigger species of rainbows. So kind of odd, um, but they're twice as large, and they're you know, almost twice as large and they're uh, longer to hatch even though they're a smaller fish than the big old um, Basmani and things like that rainbows so just a little weird quirk of nature and uh, some tips for you guys to raise any sort of fry watch out for the decor uh, distilled water you don't want to use either so just have some tank water that's been sitting around and not not cleaned with decor for you know three or four days at least, and you'll be fine. So, uh, unless you have a rain barrel or something like that to collect water. Uh, but don't use distilled, because it's just a little too harsh and uh, devoid of minerals and things. So, all right, guys. Well, I hope you take care of your fish and the people around you and yourself, and uh, we will talk to you later. So, swim on. <laughs> Till next time. Bye.